none other than the actress Pam Greer right here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Pam? I am doing so well. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. Great to, to see you. To come here because I'm... I just love sports. I was raised, I was lucky mm -hmm. to come from an environment of rural, military, and urban. So I got the best of all worlds. You got the Air Force Academy and yeah. the jets flying over and you have basketball, football. We even play flag every Thanksgiving. And mm. uh, back home in Colorado, um, I freeze my corral. So we have an ice rink and we play ghetto hockey. <laughs> People versus the dogs. And okay. everyone brings their uh, potluck and they bring, we play with a broom or dust mop yeah. and sneakers and the dogs. Uh, everyone's dogs are like 20, 30 dogs with, with uh, tennis balls. And we have to get the tennis ball, hit it into the net yeah. before a dog gets it and runs up through the corral. <laughs> They do the dogs beat us three years in a row. That, well, I could imagine that the dog can really get something After done. After tennis ball, yeah, they, yeah, go, they lose their minds. I know. You kidding me? You lose. Right. So, but it's so much fun. And great neighborhood who we respond to each other's cultures very well. Yeah, I mean, ghetto hockey. Is that ghetto what? hockey. Okay. It and they call me Mommy G, so my my will be my hockey. Well, I mean, it's interesting. You you, you We live, like hockey. Well, Pam, you've lived in you you've been living uh your your best life and you're now in this film Bless in this TV show Bless This Mess on on ABC. Yeah, uh, it shortly airs before April uh, 16th. Yeah, it starting premieres. April 16th mm -hmm. and we'll definitely talk about that in a second. But you were just telling uh Chris, that's Chris, my buddy Chris across the way over there. You were just telling us before Bef Hi, Chris. Hey, Pam. How are you? How are you? Great. You were just saying before we started that um, who did you who did you have over to the house that you said when they come um, to town? Daryl Jones was playing um, bass for the Rolling Stones, and he came over once to the ranch. Right. They all get lost and think they're going to die because it's, it's a two-lane country road. Right. And then I had Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. Exhibit, and Dre. They had a concert mm -hmm. in um, Fiddler's Green, yeah. and I invited him over to have breakfast. Uh, my mom was uh, early 80s at the time, mm -hmm. and... And um, before they went on the show and made, made sure that a, a barbecue guy delivered food to them. You know, I try to, you know, take care of folks when they come to town. And so they came out, had breakfast. They had like, you know, 900 eggs, you know, 50 pounds of bacon, toast juice and everything. And, and just loved it. They wanted to see my horses, okay. um, which I rescued for their pretty riding program. These are big horses. These are jumpers. These are Grand Prix jumpers. They're it's not tiny, you know, sport horses. So Snoop said he's going, you know. He wanted to ride him. He wanted. He ran. Exhibit, who is half his size, said, "I'll do it." You know. So it's always the, 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 the min, diminutive <laughs> yes. hero that takes charge. Yeah. But my horses were acting up. They mm -hmm. came down sliding and jumping and bucking and scared everybody. I said, mm -hmm. ooh, what, what? You don't act like this all the time. Right. And so I said, no, I don't want to get Snoop hurt. He's got a concert, so, you know, stay back, everybody. But what, it was fun. They what, came out. Did uh, did Snoop have gin with his juice? Uh, no. In that breakfast? He, no, he did not, but he had something else before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> because when they open the door and my mom and I are standing I say I bought a small one level brick ranch house right and so my barn is bigger than my house right. so we're standing out there and they say Pam we, we're looking for you we're looking for you and they drive right by me I said turn around come back so they came up to the drive and they said we thought it was the helps house mm -hmm. I'm like no it's a small house you yes. know because I, I really like a house like Warren Buffett's mm -hmm. you know a small brick house you know very unpretentious, you can fix it up on the inside. And so they drove in and parked, and all the whole crew, 12 members, got out of the van. They opened the door, smoke billowed out, it hit my mom in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, oh, that's spicy. They proceeded to have the munchies, and so did my mom. She sat down with them, and oh, she was eating eggs. I was, like, serving and cooking for an Fantastic. hour. I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, so anyway, no, it wasn't any gin and juice. Pam Greer here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, who's the most, I guess, uh, talented athlete you've ever met? Either worked with or came across or anything like that, Pam? Well, through the 50 years of my career, early, early sure. on, yeah. early on was mm -hmm. Ferdinand Lewis Alcindor Jr., who became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was my first boyfriend when I transferred from Colorado to try to get into UCLA film school. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there was, I, um... He looked at me at a, a club where all the Commodores are hanging out in Crenshaw, and he had a cane and glasses, and, and I was this wallflower with the one skirt and one blouse, and and he came up to me, and <laughs> he saw this fish, catfish out of water, and um, uh, he, he said, where are you from? Because <laughs> I look quite different. Mm -hmm. I look like a homely country girl, mm -hmm. Colorado, by Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And he had that look like, black people in Wyoming? <laughs> 
black people come and we ski we ski you know i've been skiing since i was a little kid riding horses and stuff so uh-huh. um he was the first mm-hmm. and then i had met rosie greer later at my second job at KHOW radio he was promoting uh, I think Daniel Boone at the time, sure. and he came through, and they said, "You're Greer, are you related?" And I said, "He doesn't look like it, you know. We <laughs> we don't have the the, the nose, so I don't know. You can, we can use it if you want to, but I I, I don't think you don't come to my house with no. your size, because my mom will say he eat us out of house and home. Don't please don't invite him to the house. <laughs> so those are the second, and then um, uh, the late uh, Florence Joiner. Hmm, Flojo, huh? Yeah, Flojo. How'd you meet her? Um, she came to see me in a play called Frank and Johnny the Claire de Lune in San Diego, she and her husband. And it was so great to see her just stunning and her, her nails and her hair. And she wanted to just show um, a, a, an imagery a, a, that women could still be beautiful mm-hmm. and have nails and hair. And they still haven't broken their, her record. She was outstanding and brilliant and smart. And she came to see me. There was no envy or anything like that. And right. it was so uplifting because I, I ran track as well in high school. I uh, ran the dashes, um, high jumped, hurdles. Uh, I bowled. I was in the bowling. Like anything to keep from doing the dishes. I was doing sports. Uh, okay. So it all worked out. It worked out. Clearly. And then um, I met uh, Irvin Magic jo- Johnson when nice. he'd opened up his theater. So I've, I've I've been able to meet a few. You're sure, you've worked with Jim Brown, correct? On a movie yeah, set? I did uh, the original the OGs with the original Jim Gangsters. Brown, yeah. Fred Williamson, and um, they they are fantastic um, athletes. And, and actually, I met Jim earlier, and I didn't know who he was. I um, was visiting some friends in the Hollywood Hills area because I was. This? Um, 1970, 1971. Okay. I was trying to get, you know, four or five jobs so I could stay and go to UCLA. And I, I said, oh, look at this hill. I could go hiking. Mm-hmm. No one hikes up Sunset Plaza Drive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but me with a fur vest on and a hiking stick and my $9.99 Sears hiking boots. I started hiking up uh, the, the, the drive. Right. And Jim Brown in a, a Mercedes convertible with Fred with a bevy of beauties hanging out all over. We're driving up Sunset Plaza, and they saw me hiking and said, what is she doing? Who is that? Right. Who is that country-ass woman walking up, hiking up Sunset Plaza Drive? And so they looked at me, and they said, I think that's Rosie Greer's cousin. <laughs> Just because you had the same last name. Yeah, night. but they I don't know where they'd seen me because no. I was not known. Um, the first week I was there, I did get to back up uh, sing with uh, Bobby Womack. Mm-hmm. And then he said, I have a friend who needs some more singers. So uh, his name is Sy- Sylvester Stewart. And uh, since you sing gospel and you play keyboards and you play instruments, you know, it, it's a double, triple scale, $300. I'm yeah. like, oh, my gosh. I, I drove out to, to California with $33 and a bucket of chicken. You know, so, you know, $300 is like, woo. Sure. I, the next day, went to CBS Records and walked in up the elevator and the, and the, the uh, uh, I guess he's not the manager, but uh, something with the session. Mm-hmm. And he came up to me. He said, okay, sign in. You'll be getting triple scaled. Have you ever worked with Wonder Love? Mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder's Wonder Love? Mm-hmm. I was Minnie Ripperton, Sarita Wright, Denise Williams, and I was seeing all these fabulous singers I've it's heard. Amazing. And I'm like, no, but I get to if you don't kick me out because I'm acting really stupid right, right now. Sure. Um, he says, well, come on in and meet, and meet um, um, Sylvester. And I walk through where the glass window is to the studio. Mm-hmm. Sly and the Family Stone. There's his afro, his his fringe. He's got the bass. This is amazing. And Buddy Mouse is playing drums in the background. I I just froze. I imagine. I just here here. I really was off the sugar beet truck. Did you ever? Did you ever, last one for you? Did you ever come across Ali? Did you ever meet Muhammad Ali? Yes, I did. When yeah. You- um. At at a uh, benefit, mm-hmm. and uh, unfortunately, he was quite um, ill. At the time. Uh-huh. And um, they had always invited me uh, to go on trips and things like that. But um, I'm not one to do that. I'm not really someone that goes out after 9 o'clock. Sure. You know, I'm kind of a, a conservative 
person because of things that had happened to me in my life. Sure. So I kind of watch myself. Got it. Yeah. Well, now you're on Bless This Mess on ABC. The premiere is mm. Tuesday, April 16th. Lake Bell and Dak Shepard play a, a, fan, a, a, a couple they from play, New York that comes oh, to Nebraska. And oh, they find I'm telling you. you, they play a young, disheartened couple, mm. newlywed. They leave the bright lights, big city of New York to go back to the heartland where we all find our heart. OK, and they're going to go back because I believe in the heartland where I live in Colorado, the farmers are the hero of the day. And without the farmers, there's no food. And for them to come back and just jump in mm -hmm. head first, feet first, butt first, thinking they can be farmers overnight and they think they can do it alone. Until they meet our motley crew. I'm the sheriff, mm -hmm. the theater director. I know everybody's secrets. I know who's creeping, who's doing what. I've taken drunk people home, my bourbon babies. And they meet me and Ed Begley Jr. And he plays Rudy. Dak Shepard plays Mike. Mm -hmm. And Lake Bell plays Real. They are the most talented, energetic actors. They make what could be silly, so rich and humorous, everyday things that you just watch them. It's just joy. I work with them and I, I guess I brought some funny to them because when I met Lake, you know, they were saying, well, they said, Pam lives the life. You know, she's, she's in dirt. She loves animals. She's, this is what she does. Mm -hmm. And they clean her up to do movies. <laughs> and so I didn't know how they would portray these wonderful people in the heartland you know, not only in New Mexico and Nebraska and Kansas and Idaho, Wyoming. My mom's from Wyoming. I know these folks and they don't curse. I don't um, curse around children. Um, I don't curse. I'll say caca doo doo pee pee, but I won't <laughs> use any other, you know, anything that will offend them. And um, uh, I came that morning right from the farm, jumped in the limo. Took off my spank so, you know, I'd have a badonkadonk on. And I had smelled like the farm. And I walked into Fox Studios and I smelled the part. And that's how I got it. And Pam Greer, you're here on the show talking about it. Bless this mess. It's wonderful. And they bless and mess in too. Are. Tuesday, <laughs> April 16th, 9.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time on ABC. We're about to see a clip uh, for the television-only segment. Great to see you here. Thank you for coming on this show. Well, thank you for having Big me. Fan. Loved you. And obviously, Jackie Brown and uh, Tarantino and then the entire filmography of my goodness career. 57 years you just Come compress yeah, i did you did it Boy, I, tell you. You... I try i try i try oh, you did it good to see you You did it thank, thank you. you for coming well, on. when I... you come to colorado you have to do my show well i would love it are you kidding me yeah i, I do the I'll show come from, from the breakfast barn since i hear it's such a party my gosh it is. we'll do it from the barn fantastic at pam greer on twitter we'll check out a clip uh when we come back here chris brockman's news update on the other side big ben listen to me did he not it seems like Big Ben is listening to me. And the Michigan Gi State. <laughs> you think they're going to win it all? I don't know. That's Dax. He was from Michigan. Oh, okay. So I kind of support my bro. You there know? you go. Uh, Pam Greer here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.